But, uh, I mean, and then let's see, other stuff besides wrestling. I mean, I, I noticed that you've also done some uh, some games on the side, like some Mar- you did a Mario Party thing. Where you played when everyone. Mario Party 10 was getting ready to be uh, was on the horizon to being released, I actually did a, a video of one game, one full board game from each of the previous uh, Mario Parties, because I actually have all of them from one through ten. See now, not very many people can claim that. <clears throat> and I mean, the games definitely evolved over time. In some ways, some people like. In some ways, some people don't like. I just I love party games, just from the standpoint when when you get together with friends, which unfortunately in my world is extremely rare nowadays. Uh, when you get together, it, it's something that you don't have to have great skill at because there's such a variety of mini games and they're just fun. Yes, <clears throat> I I like that. I I really enjoyed the games as they evolve evolved and. Uh, but my heart will always be in the Nintendo 64 games. Like, mainly um, Mario Party 3. That was my favorite. Yes! I freaking loved that one mode where it was like uh, you had characters in front and behind you and you were trying to attack your opponent. Mm hmm. I the remember. Battle mode, I think it was. Dual mode. Dual, that's it, dual mode. Oh my god, yes. I, that was so unique and cool. I, I loved it. It was just, it, it was unique, and surprisingly, they didn't uh, continue that for for some odd reason. I don't I don't know why, but they didn't. <clears throat> A lot of people hate how it's evolved to uh, in uh, Mario Party Nine and and Ten, where you move along in a cart together. Oh right, uh, they the, the they ditched the old format where you had to go around the board individually and you do it for a set number of turns instead it became more of get to point a to point b and each person becomes a captain my my take on it it's just simply different i can see pros and cons to both sides honestly you know i i kind of hate sometimes when people just completely go one way or the other oh i completely hate the card well you know the card's kind of fun because like when you when you have something coming up ahead of you and you don't want to be the captain, you might use one of your special dice so you can not roll a high number. You can roll a low number so you don't get that bad thing. I mean, there's there's strategy to or when you have the little captain mini games that happen where you get to control what order people roll and see who gets you know to the end first in the little mini game. Mm-hmm. I yeah. those those were good games. I mean, they they worked. It was just simply different. That's all. It just that's it. There was one with the, what was it, the, the ghost house, where when you pass a certain spot, a ghost appears behind you, and it moves three spaces every turn. Mm-hmm. And if you're the captain, when it gets to you, you lose half your coin. So there, I mean, you have that aspect, and then sometimes you'll have a ghost in front of you and behind you. Congratulations. You know, it, were, it was just different. Moving together in a cart, it was just different. Yeah, it, it's different. And and I liked it for that. I mean, I just I I liked it better than eight or or most of the games before that. You know, I liked that it was different because you know it actually made uh, let's playing that game when I did it uh, easier in a sense because you know when it starts, you know when it ends, and you know and you know it's not like I had to play x amount of turns. You didn't know how long it was going to last. Yeah. Now, you know one thing I really liked that I think started in 5, and I think it went through 6, 7, and 8, but then it went away when they went to the carts in 9, was being able to have items that you threw out onto the board. Oh, right. You had the capsules or whatever, and you throw them on the board, so it might be something that takes somebody's coins, or, you know, or it might block a pass, so even if they rolled a, 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 an 8... If it was two spaces ahead of them, they only went two spaces and stopped them. Yeah, they had they had those sort of gimmicks. Those are those were good <clears throat> games. I I liked uh, five in particular. That was my favorite. I, I, I fun, but, but yeah. like I said, those Mario Party games, you can get people together and 
you don't have to have a high skill set because every mini game, uh, as long as you t turn the settings on, you get to see what the rules are for it. So it's like, okay, everybody ready? Let's go. <laughs> yes. Some games are based purely on luck. Some have skill. Some have a little bow. Some are action. Some are thinking. Yeah, some of them are button mashing, and then <clears throat> you might have, or you have to press the right button quick. You know, those sort of games. I'll tell you a little something on button mashing. So I, I learned a technique way back in the NES days. I mean, we're going old school. If it's a game where you just have to mash a button as fast as you can, and as long as you don't have to worry about hitting the button next to it, like let's say you have to hit A as fast as possible, I have a technique that is almost unbeatable. I can actually turn my thumb like upside down so the nail of my thumb is on the button. And I just rub it back and forth across the button really fast. See, now I don't have that skill, <laughs> apparently. But that's but it's amazing that uh, you have your own skill, and that's one thing you are good at. I, that's something I never could do. <clears throat> I mean, I can do it as well as the average person, but yeah, most people will just tap it, obviously, because that's the only way they really know to hit the button quick. But yeah, I can turn my thumb sideways and rub, so I'm actually getting about twice as many hits per tap, really, because I'm going across it both ways. Wow. Oh, it's quick. 